Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon today is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, the gospel text uh, that you heard a few moments ago. Tonight we are going to talk about baptism. The title of the sermon is, What is Baptism? It's necessary for us to go through uh, this examination of the sacrament uh, because there is so much misunderstanding about it. From the time of Jesus until somewhere about the middle of the 1500s, the church was absolutely clear on what baptism is. It is a sacrament. It does create faith. It does forgive sins. It does grant salvation. It does grant eternal life. It does uh, welcome the Holy Spirit into your heart. All biblical stuff, all perfectly simple and understandable, all held completely by the universal or the little c Catholic. Catholicus is a Greek word that means universal. All held by the universal or Catholic church until the middle 1500s when a group called the Anabaptists or uh, Anabaptists, the not baptizing ones, a radical sect in uh, Germany uh, came about and all of a sudden they announced that no, we would not be baptizing infants anymore, nor would be, we be baptizing uh, adults unless first they had made a decision to let Jesus in their heart, as if anyone can let God anything, and since that time, uh, that heresy, that unbiblical teaching has spread. It spread through the English and Scottish Reformations into the United States. And today, a very large part of Protestantism, American Protestantism, denies the biblical teachings about baptism and says instead that baptism is merely a symbol merely an ordinance, merely an external representation, a rite or ritual representing what is happening inside of the believer. There is a technical theological term for this kind of teaching uh, that we're working on here at Gloria Dei. It's three syllables, a product made by Oscar Mayer. It's baloney. All right, very good. And we're going to show you why from Scripture. Now, I have tons of Scripture to back all of this up. Baptism is taught everywhere in the Bible, and it's, of course, perfectly clear. But I will do the best that I can uh, to cover the salient points within the boundaries of my 45-minute sermon. I can do that on Saturday night because you're all regulars. On Sunday morning, I'll get panic in the expressions of the vis, what, you know? I think I might just say an hour just to see what happens, yeah. Uh, from the small catechism, this is Luther's small catechism written in 1529 to address uh, theological problems that he found. He did a tour of the churches in Saxony. He found there there were priests who were not literate. He found there were priests who didn't know the Lord's Prayer. He found priests who didn't know really what baptism and the Lord's Supper are. He wrote the small catechism. Uh, this was to be what was taught by the head of household to his family, meaning dad teaching the children. He preferred that to be at supper time. So the family, Luther wanted the family to sit down together and discuss items from the small catechism so the father would pass on his faith to the family. In here, it says the sacrament of holy baptism. What is baptism? Luther writes, baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. What is that word? It's the Great Commission from Matthew 28. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What benefits does baptism give? Luther writes, it works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promises of God declare. Note here that Luther is very clearly saying that nothing is being done by the person being baptized. Okay? The person being baptized has not made a decision, has not uh, forgiven himself, has not 
uh, rescued himself from death, etc., etc., etc. Baptism does all of these things. Forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, grants eternal salvation. Okay? Third part. How can water do such great things? Luther writes, certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things. It's like Holy Communion. The word of God in and with bread and wine does the consecration so that what we receive is the real body and blood of Jesus in with and under the elements of bread and wine. Okay? In baptism, it's the word of God in and with the water that baptizes, that actually saves, according to Titus 3. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Notice that God does the saving. I don't save myself. I don't decide anything. I don't ha have any part in the action being done here. God does the saving. Notice also that baptism actually does save. He saved us through the washing of rebirth, not of symbolism, but of rebirth and renewal, not symbolic renewal, but actual renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, so baptism also justifies, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life, so baptize, uh, baptism also adopts you into the family of God. This is a trustworthy saying, Titus 3, verses 5 through 8. What does such baptizing with water indicate? Luther writes, it indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, that a new person should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. So the old sinful us, sinful from the moment of conception, is daily drowned in the waters of our baptism so that we arise brand new with Christ. Where is this written? Luther writes, St. Paul writes this in Romans chapter 6. This is verse 4. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Again, that's Romans 6, verse 4. So whence all the confusion? This is perfectly straightforward stuff, not complex easy to understand. Where it comes from is enlightenment rationalism via the Anabaptists and the very human broken sinful desire for me to stay in control even while I'm pretending to follow Christ and to be submitting myself to him and giving up everything for him and he's doing all the work and I'm doing none of it except that I still want to hang on and claim that my decision prepares me for entry into the family of God. Now, true, we don't baptize adults until they've been through instruction, yes. We want them to understand what is going on. We want them to have proper doctrine, have a clue. It would be nice to have a clue what baptism is about, yes. We do want them to be contrite. We do want them to repent of their sins, yes, absolutely. But baptism is promised to the believer's children apart from a human decision apart from an age of reason, whatever that is. I've got teenagers and I'm not so sure they're reasonable. Oh, did I say that out loud? Okay, et cetera, et cetera. So let's dig into some of this scripture and take a closer look at baptism even than we did in the small catechism. First, there is a misunderstanding, a huge misunderstanding about the baptism of Jesus. Lots and lots of Protestants, otherwise well-meaning Christians, teach, claim that Jesus' baptism is just like our baptism. No, it wasn't. It was nothing like our baptism. There are only a couple of connections, and the rest is completely disconnected. Why? Because, first, baptism forgives sins. Jesus had no sins. Second, baptism grants you faith, as we'll see from Scripture in a minute. Jesus didn't need that. Being God, he already believed in him. Third, baptism adopts you into the family of God as we just saw from Titus 3. Well, Jesus is God, doesn't need to be adopted into the family. Baptism grants you eternal life. He's God, he has that. 
Uh, so you see all of the major things that baptism does, God, Jesus, God, second person of the Holy Trinity, already had. Okay, so why then? Why, why, why baptism? What happened there? 